en el marco de las actividades del programa Conciencia 2016 de la Universidad de Santiago de Compostela para la divulgación de la ciencia a cargo de líderes de la máxima relevancia mundial, el Colegio Peleteiro tiene el privilegio de contar con la presencia de Cédric Villani, ganador en 2010 de la Medalla Internacional para Descubrimientos Sobresalientes en Matemática, más conocida como Medalla Fields. Dicho premio cuatrienal para matemáticos que no superen los 40 años de edad y que, junto al premio Abel, es el mayor reconocimiento en esta disciplina, le fue concedido por sus pruebas de amortiguamiento del andón no lineal y convergencia al equilibrio de la ecuación de Boltzmann. Cédric Villani, nacido en 1973, es profesor de la Universidad de Lyon y director del Instituto Henri Poincaré de París. Obtuvo el premio Fermat en 2009 y fue nombrado Caballero de la Orden Nacional del Mérito en 2009 y miembro de la Legión de Honor en 2011. Además de por sus trabajos matemáticos, destaca en su afán por divulgar las matemáticas. Mathematics is the science of truth and proof. And uh, uh, it's not so much about computing than about proving. Son ejemplos de ello el proyecto de creación del Museo de las Matemáticas en París, su cargo de presidente del Consejo Científico del Instituto Matemático Panafricano o las siguientes obras para el gran público. Como preparación para la visita, en las aulas del Colegio Peleteiro se ha desarrollado una presentación para alumnos de bachillerato que incluía la historia de las medallas Fields, la trayectoria académica de Sergio Villani y una pequeña introducción a las ecuaciones en derivadas parciales. Hace unos días, los alumnos de bachillerato y los de cuarto de ESO pudieron asistir a la conferencia Conceptos compartidos con Cédric Villani en la matemática industrial en Galicia, a cargo de la profesora de la Universidad de Santiago de Compostela, doña Elena Vázquez Endón. Sirvan para terminar estas palabras de Cédric Villani. Las matemáticas no son solo números, son lógica y verdad. Tratan sobre cómo ordenar el mundo, entenderlo y profundizar por medio de los sentimientos. Además de ser, claro, el máximo impulsor de los avances tecnológicos. El Colegio Manuel Peleteiro tiene el honor de contar con la presencia del doctor Cédric Villani. Mr. Cédric Villani, ladies and gentlemen, teachers, dear colleagues, mathematics has worked hand in hand with mankind from the beginning of times to the current technological world. At the same time, noticeable in nature and hidden on countless occasions in our everyday lives, hard, low, and unreachable for some, exciting and a source of challenges for others, a simple clue for, for many activities and a wonderful proof for so many real phenomena Mathematics is represented here today in this auditorium of our school by one of the greatest, Cédric Villani. The son of two literature teachers, he has achieved a very important place in the world of mathematics. His appointment as the director of the Institute Henri Poincaré in Paris at the age of 36, receiving the FAMAT prize and especially being one of the few winners of the Fields Medal are a good example of this. But beyond his undisputable achievements in the field of physical mathematics, 
we must emphasize his involvement in the task of approaching mathematics to wider audiences. Through countless lectures around the world, the project of a new museum of mathematics, and the release of several non-academic books. Mr. Cedric Villani, on behalf of all the members of this institution, Colegio Manuel Peredeiro, I want to thank you for being here <coughs> and, for, and for this lecture, which will certainly be exciting and will give us a new vision of mathematics and its use. Bonjour à tous, cher Monsieur Villani. Nous sommes enchantés de vous accueillir dans notre établissement. Nous n'avons pas souvent l'occasion d'entrer en contact avec une personnalité du monde francophone et c'est pour nous un honneur et un plaisir de pouvoir vous rencontrer. Nous avons découvert votre parcours professionnel dans un article publié dans le livre de texte que nous utilisons en cours de français. Et les hasards, les destins ou les lois de la probabilité ont voulu que nos chemins se croisent. <rire> Nous tenons à vous remercier d'avoir accepté de partager avec nous vos connaissances. Je suis sûr que cette expérience va être très enrichissante. Merci d'être là. Ok. Thank you very much for this great introduction, for the invitation, and it's a, a great pleasure to be able to have such a distinguished audience in which there is a potentiality for so many great accomplishments. So, today's lecture will be about certain combination of history of sciences, mathematics, physics, even biology. I will explain in the middle how it's related to my own research indirectly and try to give you some hints of the problems that mathematicians are looking at in this respect. Thumb arrives in a vertical way, exactly as so you studied physics. You can uh, predict their, about the light that they radiate and so But we can always approximate and replace them by expressions which are almost derivatives put this in the computer, look what goes on, and it's an enormous field at the interface of mathematics and numerical computations to understand how to do this. I know that rock is not like wax, but a billion years is a very long time, to say the least, and the forces are enormous. Kelvin was no stupid guy. He had understood that you have to take care about the convection possibly. But he also knew that the interior of the Earth is like solid rock. And solid rock is not something that you can distort, it's not like a liquid. That is our intuition. But remember, mathematics is here to get beyond the intuition. And on a time scale of one billion years, the rock is flowing. And that is what you observe in geology with the deformations of the rocks, which on these time scales are like liquid, but rather phenomena such as how the gas behaved in uh, the room around us, how the plasma behaved, how the temperature evolved in this gas of this plasma, how it equilibrates, how it cools down, and applications of these mathematical models to such problems in physics. Thank you. From your point of view... Where are you? Yes. Okay. Uh, from your point of view, uh, which is the relationship between maths and philosophy? Uh, tricky question. Uh, starting from the ancient Greeks, math became a part of philosophy. This was the enormous change of point of view introduced by the Greek mathematicians and philosophers. And uh, in those days, the mathematicians considered themselves as philosophers, and the philosophers made a point to know mathematics. You found mathematics in Plato, you find mathematics in Aristotle, all the important philosophers in those days, uh, for them, mathematics was super important. Uh, for some time, 
it continued to be so, but at some point it diverged. The mathematics became so complicated that the philosophers could not be aware of the latest developments or misinterpreted it. And the mathematicians became suspicious about the philosophy. In the 19th century, some of the best scientists, you know, physicists or mathematicians, try to really read the philosophy of the time and to understand what is there. And most of the time, they came back saying it was all nonsense, that it was stupid and so on. Like Gauss, for instance, was thinking that all the philosophy of the German philosophy of his time was meaningless. While nowadays, these uh, philosophers, these German philosophers like Kant or Hegel are considered very important in the history of philosophy. What are the problems? One problem is that first in mathematics and in philosophy, the notion of proof has become quite different. In mathematics, the proof is a very rigorous process. In philosophy, often, you know, thinking of a big development and giving some examples will constitute some kind of proof. Also, another thing that we can say is that in philosophy, the weight of history is extremely important. So that in a philosophy course, you will hear a lot about the opinion of that philosopher and that philosopher and that other philosopher. In my opinion, but I'm not uh, a specialist, in my opinion, this is the biggest, single biggest problem that there is in philosophy. The philosophy course is here to help you make your own opinion and thought, but most of the course is about explaining what other people thought. In mathematics, it's kind of the contrary. Very little time is spent of histor on history, and everything is spent on the concepts. And sometimes it would be good to think a little bit more of the history. So, uh, both subjects are about understanding the world, but in their way of working, and in, their, in the, the, the list of contributors, they are very different. And uh, probably, you know, 100 years ago, somebody like Henri Poincaré, the famous French mathematician, also was considered as an important philosopher in the philosophy of sciences. But since then, it's hard to find in the 20th century somebody that would be recognized at the same time as an important philosopher and as an important mathematician. Yo quiero agradecerle al profesor Jorge Mira como responsable del programa Conciencia que nos permita participar y tener la posibilidad de llevar a cabo este tipo de actividades. Y por supuesto eh, al profesor Cédric Villani que haya tenido la deferencia, la amabilidad de acercarse a estar hoy esta tarde con nosotros y le agradezco mucho la, la tan interesante charla que nos ha ofrecido. Muchas gracias y hasta siempre. Bienvenido. Gracias, gracias. Gracias muchas.